Dublin and drove to Belfast. After checking into the hotel, we went on a tour of the murals with a company called Belfast Mural Tours. We had a wonderful driver, Joe, who told us in detail about the troubles in an unbiased, non-political, non-religious view. He told us that these murals are subject to change so that what you see now may be updated next year. The first of the murals on this international wall is from right to left, 10 hunger strikers who died in the Mays prison in 1981 whilst protesting the removal of political status. The next is Free the Five who were Cuban men convicted in Miami in 2001. All were convicted of spying on America. Next is the West Belfast Anti-Racist Network set up in the West Belfast to educate the school children to the anti-racist message. The West Belfast Taxi Association celebrates the introduction of the London-style cabs to Belfast bought by the IRA as a result of the removal of public transport by the Belfast City Council. Next is a mural showing the Falls Curfew of 1970. Over 4,000 women marched to the Falls Road and ended the three-day curfew that had been imposed there. This photo was supplied by Joe and shows over 3,000 women marching to the Falls Road carrying bread and milk. Milk was needed for the baby's bottles. Five local men who died in 1972 are remembered by friends. A thank you to all who speak the Irish language in the neighborhood. This mural is called Guernicia. The original was painted by Picasso in response to the bombing of Guernicia, a Basque country village in northern Spain, by the German and Italian warplanes at the behest of the Spanish Nationalist forces on April 26, 1937 during the Spanish Civil War. This copy is a tribute to civilians killed in conflict the world over. The first mural depicts the 25th anniversary of the Milltown Massacre when a Republican funeral was attacked by a Loyalist gunman. Next is the Free Marion Price mural, a present-day campaign for the release of Marion Price being held for political reasons. And the next is a protest by present-day prisoners highlighting the forced strip searches they endure each day. The first mural depicts the Palestinian struggles for autonomous states. The next one features Kieran Nugent, he was the first blanket man. He began a protest in 1976 by refusing to wear a convict's uniform. Instead, he covered his nakedness with two blankets. He donned the blankets for three years until his release. The protest ended in 1981. Bobby Sands, born March 9, 1954, was an IRA prisoner who became a signed Fen MP whilst in jail. On May 5, 1981, he became the first prisoner to die during the 66-day hunger strike while imprisoned in Her Majesty's prison maze. The Peace Wall is a 45-foot high wall that separates the Catholics from the Protestants. Each visitor is invited to write a message on the wall. This section is a half mile long. The wall started life as a nine-foot high divide. The houses on the other side of the wall are a mere eight feet away. It was raised to 45 feet to stop attacks and perhaps promote peace between the two communities. Joe's photo shows the first peace wall in Bombay Street in 1969. Another photo provided by Joe depicts Bombay Street burned out by Protestants in 1969. Standing on Lilliput Street, we see this image of the face in Cave Hill Mountain. It was the inspiration by author Jonathan Swift to write Gulliver's Travels. One of the peace lines used to separate the Catholic Falls Street from Protestant Shankill Street. There are three of these gates. This one and one other is open Monday to Friday and closes at 6 p.m. It is not open on weekends. The main gate opens at 6 a.m. and closes at 11 p.m. every day. These figures represent the largest Protestant military groups, the UDA, Ulster Defense Association, formed in 1972, the UDU, Ulster Defense Union, formed in 1893, and the UFF, Ulster Freedom Fighters, founded in 2007. No matter where you stand, the gun follows you.
Another Loyalist mural in Shank Hill Road depicts a Cushlin. He is one of the greatest heroes of Irish mythology and legend, best known for his single-handed defense of Ulster. He is said to have lived in the first century BC. Cushlin's adventures were recorded in a series of tales known as the Ulster Cycle. There are many legends telling the origins of the Red Hand of Ulster. This mural depicts only one of these. King William of Orange was the Protestant son-in-law of the Catholic King James II. He defeated his father-in-law at the Battle of Boyne in 1690, thus giving the English throne to the Protestants. The Divas Tower is a 200-foot tall residential tower built in 1966. Due to the provisional IRA activity in the area, the British Army constructed a spy post on the roof in the 1970s and occupied the top two floors of the building. At the height of the Troubles, the Army was only able to access the spy post by helicopter. The post was removed in 2005. Joe's photo shows the DV Flats complex which was demolished when the tower was built. The house known as the smallest house in Belfast is part of the Great Victoria Street Presbyterian Church. Because there is no internal connecting door, it is officially the smallest house in Belfast. A view from our hotel room at the Hilton showing rooftop gardens next door and the Lagan River. These two cranes are called Samson and Goliath and are situated in the shipyard of Harland and Wolfe. Goliath stands at 315 feet and was completed in 1969. Samson is slightly taller at 348 feet and was completed in 1974. In 2003, these Belfast landmarks were scheduled for preservation. On our way to the Titanic Quarter Visitor Center, we came across this interesting sculpture. The Titanic Quarter Visitor Center opened to the public in March 2012. It is a monument to Belfast's maritime heritage. It tells the stories of the ill-fated RMS